Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Jonathan Curtis and today I'm going to share with you three really cool, interesting and fun halftime shuffle grooves. These are pretty challenging, uh, they're quite tough, there's a lot going on, but when you can master them, when you can nail them, they sound really, really cool. This is going to work in three stages, a sort of introduction to the halftime shuffle, what it is and how you can form a basic halftime shuffle, um, the technical aspects involved, and how you can use these and then how we can make them more advanced, a bit more challenging and a bit more exciting. So that's the kind of structure for today's video. First things first, what is a halftime shuffle? Well, in order to understand a halftime shuffle, we need to understand two things, halftime and shuffles. Halftime is relatively easy. If you take a basic groove like this, a 4-4 straight rock groove, in a measure of 4-4, the snare drum plays twice on beats two and four, one and two and three and four and. To convert this to half time, we place a single bass drum on beat three. We essentially half the rate of the backbeat. So instead of going bass, snare, bass, snare, our backbeat is going to become bass, snare. Okay, it takes the same amount of time, but it halves the rate of the backbeat. So I will start in this so-called common time and then I will switch to half time. So you can start to hear there how this half time application, this half time rhythm, if you like. Uh, affect the feeling of that groove, of that beat. A shuffle is essentially a rhythm. The rhythm is this. You'll have heard it from the blues. The blues is essentially a shuffle and there is a lot more to a shuffle than I am showing you here, but I just want to get across the basic idea of what a shuffle is. A basic shuffle groove would be something like this, in which we alternate the bass and the snare drum, keeping that shuffle pattern going. I'm counting that or I'm feeling that bass, a snare, a bass, a snare, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. That's your basic shuffle. So if we combine these two things together, we take that basic shuffle rhythm and we convert it to a half time, we get the half time shuffle that we're interested in today. It sounds like this. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a bass, a two, a snare, a four, a bass, a two, a snare, a four. That gives us our basic halftime shuffle feeling. You can hear it's got this nice bound, this nice swing to it, but that half rate bass drum and snare drum pattern lets it kind of lope along a little bit more kind of subtly than our, than our common time shuffle. So that's what we're dealing with today. Let's break this down a little bit and see how we can start to make this more interesting, okay? Our hand pattern here, our right hand, is playing an accent followed by a tap. Accent, tap, accent, tap, accent, tap, accent. As we're counting this, this accent is on the beat. One, a two, a three, a four, a one. This rocking motion is going to be important because we're going to play around with this rocking motion a little bit in what follows. So if we get our basic shuffle pattern going again, watch that right hand as it hits the accent and then the tap in that shuffle rhythm. Rhythmically, this hand is actually playing either side of a grouping of three. If it helps, you can consider these triplets. So if you count triplets, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, this right hand is playing the one and the uh, 
whereas the middle note of that triplet, the and in this case, is silent. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. That's our basic shuffle rhythm. But because of the way we count it, we've got this middle note, that and of our triplet that is not currently doing anything. So the first thing we're going to do here is add a ghost note with that left hand. Your left hand throughout all of this can stay right in that central snare drum position, and it's going to play just the gentlest tap after the accent and before the tap on the hi-hat. So it's going to be accent, ghost, tap, accent, ghost, tap, accent, ghost, tap. And you can start to hear how we can develop this really cool textural thing by having that snare drum just tapping away on that middle note of the triplet while the hi-hat is taking care of either end of that triplet. If you're new to this, spend time on that because that's the, that's the kind of heartbeat of this whole thing. Having that, that ghost note hi-hat pattern rolling along is really going to make these grooves sing and sound really cool. We can add in a bass drum as it would be on uh, beat one, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and, a, and just get used to what that feels like. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now this is really starting to groove. This is really starting to dance along. We, of course, need to reinsert this snare drum accent, which is falling on beat three of the bar, one and a two and a three and a four and a. This is still on the left hand as it was previously, but now we have a really interesting technical problem, okay? Because we have an accent which falls on beat three, but then immediately after it, the very next triplet note, the and, needs to be a ghost note. So we actually have this, one and a, uh, two and a. Uh, uh. We've got an accent on three, a ghost note immediately after it on and. Three and a. Uh. Now, anybody that tries this half-time shuffle for the first time has two major technical problems to overcome. That, that rolling ghost note pattern, and that ghost note that falls immediately after the accent. And what invariably happens is this. I'm exaggerating it so you can hear it, but essentially, because of a lack of control in that left hand, you have two accents, essentially. We really need to control this so we've got an accent immediately followed by a ghost note. Notice how this is achieved by playing a large accent, but then my hand and my wrist controls the bounce so the ghost note stays low. That stick stays low to the ground, right? Low to the ground, low to the snare drum skin. Okay, now we're really starting to get somewhere. If you compare that to what we started with, it's a subtle shift, but it's really powerful at the same time. Uh, you really add to the energy and the drive that this groove has got. Okay, from here, we can start to adjust this hand pattern to break away from that strict shuffle pattern a little bit and get a few more intricacies going between these two surfaces, the hi-hat and the ghost note. The first one we are going to look at, because, as you may know, if you know your theory, 
half times these swing fields are based on groups of threes and groups of six. Any, any pattern in a group of three or a group of six is going to fit really naturally. So we're going to take an old favorite of mine, a double paradiddle. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is a right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, a double paradiddle, right? Exactly as it sounds. We are going to play this in the same position between the hi-hat and the snare drum, and the left-handed double paradiddle provides our accent on the downbeat. One and uh, two and uh, there's our right-handed version. Three and uh, four and uh. That, right? Sounds really, really nice and is relatively simple to play because if you have ever practiced your, your rudiments, your paradiddle family of rudiments, especially that double paradiddle, this is going to come really naturally to you. A few points of note here. Um, have a play with the accents. You saw me playing here with the side of the hi-hat and the top of the hi-hat. You can get some really interesting effects, uh, effects based on where you accent and where you tap on that hi-hat. I like to accent everything except the diddles. Or you can even accent the second note of the diddle. This can be really powerful when played on the ride cymbal and you get that ride bell involved. If I play just the basic double paradiddle pattern all on the body of the ride cymbal, it sounds good, right? But if I start bringing some accents on that bell, for instance, the first note of the right hand, both singles, This has an added bonus in that being a familiar pattern, a double paradiddle, we can take this around the drums really easily. For example, a simple orchestration of that double paradiddle. take it where you like, but I've actually not changed that hand pattern regardless of whether I'm playing the fill or the groove. That double paradiddle pattern just stays going on. We can alter that paradiddle so it's not quite so, if you excuse the term, generic, right? We all know a double paradiddle. It works, it sounds great, but it's a little bit safe. So we are going to essentially invert that right-handed double paradiddle. If you think of an inverted paradiddle, the diddle, the right, left, right, right, moves to the middle of the paradiddle. So it becomes left, right, right, left, or right, left, left, right. The diddle moves to the middle, right? We're going to do the same thing with our double paradiddle here. Instead of right, left, right, left, right, right, we are going to play right, left, left, right, left, right. The left-handed version is going to stay as a normal double paradiddle. So our pattern becomes right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. This just simply moves where that diddle on the snare drum is, where it sits. Previously, it was at the end of the right-handed paradiddle. Now it's in the middle of it.
if you like, we can apply that same concept to the right-handed, to the left-handed version as well. So the second paradiddle, left, right, left, right, left, left, also inverts. Left, right, right, left, right, left. You can see this is creating some really intricate and cool sounding hi-hat or ride cymbal patterns. We could even try it with a full reversed double paradiddle. So right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left. This has the same problem as the first shuffle we did where you have an accent immediately followed by a ghost note, left, left, but it's interesting. We've really got some interesting and powerful tools at our disposal, right? So to finish with, um, I'm just going to groove for a little bit on this ride cymbal. I'm going to keep the hi-hat on two and four just to give us a kind of swing feel in the background. And I'm just going to try and switch between these variations at will. I'm not going to say at random, but at will. I'm going to try and improvise this halftime shuffle feel uh, while keeping those hand patterns varied and hopefully interesting. For now, I'll keep the bass drum relatively simple. I could go on, but that gives you some idea, hopefully, of what you, what you can do with this stuff. As I touched on briefly, you can apply this same concept to your fills around the drums, keeping that six note rhythm going, trying those different paradiddle diddle or double paradiddle variations, explore paradiddle diddles, right? There's a lot you can do in a similar vein with that slightly different diddle variation, the paradiddle diddle. Um, so I'll leave that there for today. Hopefully that's given you some ideas with what you can do with this halftime shuffle, a few things to think about. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please feel free to get in touch with any questions or suggestions for future videos. Check out, my, check out the rest of my channel. I've got a wealth of videos on there, uh, ranging from theory and performance through to clinics, my band, and anything else. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. See you soon.